Hello, friends. Welcome to the Rachel Varga podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. I just love showing up here and connecting with so many of you amazing souls who are just really wanting to do your best to look after yourself and also so that you can continue to show up and be your best version for those around you that you interact as well. Because self care actually isn't as, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Self-care isn't selfish, right? When we look after ourselves, we set the example, we set the stage, we are walking the walk and being the witness and being the pillar for those around us. So so when we up-level, we encourage other people to up-level in our lives too. So today we're going to talk about the seen and unseen toxins that are impacting our health mood and overall being. And the reason I'm talking about this is because honestly, I'm seeing a lot of people struggling at the moment, struggling with stress, struggling with anxiety, struggling with skin issues, you know, fear of missing out, all that stuff. And I really just, my intention for this episode is to bring a few things into your awareness that you might not know about because there's a lot of unseen toxins around us. I'm also going to be sharing some of my favorite ways to actually ground myself and stabilize my mood and and optimize my energy levels, which allows me to show up and do this work here and and hang out with you guys. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Amy Carlson. She's today's guest. She is known as the Toxin Terminator. Amy is doing a whole bunch of incredible work helping women who are, say, navigating menopause, navigating breast cancer. And she is just my go-to person for all things toxins. She's known as the Toxin Terminator. She's really fun. I've known Amy now for a couple of years. I've been on her podcast now, uh, the Toxin Terminator, and also her Transforming Women's Health Facebook group, where I actually shared a very personal very personal um, experience with cancer in my family. Uh, my mom, my mother, and my sister. She actually got me to cry <laughs> on camera. First time is, uh, and probably won't be the last. So, welcome, Amy Carlson. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, aka the Toxin Terminator. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here, Rachel, uh, and I'm so blessed to have you as a friend um, and a colleague. Thank you so much for um, the wonderful introduction. Yeah. And I mean, if you guys tuning in, you're like, oh, who are these people showing up on screen all the time? Like this stuff ain't easy, right? It takes an enormous amount of effort and work for us to research these topics. And what I have to do, Amy, is I have to work as an evidence-based clinician. So I can't talk about stuff unless there's research to back it up. So we're going to get into the nitty gritty of uh, some of the latest research around and actually not latest research. This stuff's been around for a while. You probably just haven't heard about it. So stay tuned for that. Before we go any further, I would love for you to subscribe on the Rachel Varga official Facebook page, YouTube channel, the Rachel Varga podcast. And don't forget to hit that bell so that you know when I go live. And if you haven't yet, you guys definitely get my sophisticated skin cheat sheet. It's a free download. When you go to rachelvarga.ca, you'll see this little pop up. I want you to get that. And there's also a really great um, at home and in clinic treatment planning tool. It's totally free. So Amy, how's your skin doing at the moment? I, you know what? This is so funny because you and I did a um, skin analysis or consultation last summer, I believe that it was. And um, of course, you know everything there is to know about skin. And I was so grateful because you've listened to me in that it was very important for me that the products I put on my face were also good for my skin. I didn't want all the toxicity because skincare can be very toxic. And, and you took what I was um, giving you and you really made a nice little package for me of, of products to use. And I'm telling, I should have taken some before pictures. Why didn't I do that? Because my skin has never felt more vibrant um, and looks so vibrant than it does today. And that's because of the products that um, you hooked me up with. Well, imagine that that. you just started feeding your skin properly, clean up your act with the toxins around you. Things are just (laughs) going to start to function optimally. It's not magic. It's actually just 
it's simply science. So the sunscreen uh, that you've been using, that's mm. a really nice one. It's a mineral based sunscreen. It also acts as a primer, gives you a little bit of color. It won't irritate your eyes. Now, ladies, 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 Linda, 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 let me tell you, <laughs> when you use this sunscreen, I'm 55. So I have sun damage to the skin. I have the wrinkle setting in. I have all that stuff happening that happens with the age. This sets such a nice tone and I don't get the caking in of the foundation into my wrinkles. It just, yes, it's, it's amazing. Um, and I had used a sunscreen prior to you and I talking. So I was like, oh, sure, it's better. Sure, it's smoother. I, I, I was pessimistic about it. And, and hands down, it's the one product I'll never be without. It's absolutely fantastic. And, and we can make claims like sunscreen prevents skin cancer because of the clinical research to back it up. So we can actually make that health claim legitimately. And that's key. So especially, you know, my skin type, your skin type, Amy, we're a little bit prone to accelerated aging, precancerous lesions, full on mm -hmm. skin cancers, skin's the largest organ, yo. And our skin will <laughs> show up toxins and toxic accumulation. So we're going to dive you into can that. reverse it. You mm -hmm. know, I've been, so we probably did this in maybe August of last year. So what that gives you four months and we're two. So six months into it, I can tell you the dark spots are diminishing from my skin just because of the treatments and the care that I have been giving it. You're protecting um, it. I'm protecting it. And it makes a huge uh, difference in the the sunscreen that we have mineral based um it has all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff in it um you know for us uh you know to be able to put onto the skin so it's fantastic yeah i love it actually this one for filming you can get it at the rachelvarga.ca forward slash store or just shoot me an email info at rachelvarga.ca i love to hear from you guys mm -hmm. and i love wearing my tinted sunscreen on camera because the one i love right now it's also a bit of a primer and it's got built-in antioxidants mm -hmm. and it's also talc free and a lot of sunscreens do have talc uh, yes. mixed in to it all right so let's kind of get a little nerdy here amy because you're at the toxin terminator and i'm going to put your knowledge to the test here <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so let's talk about electromagnetic toxins how it impacts our skin because really people are struggling right now they're struggling right. with stress they're struggling with pain anxiety you know menopause this is very real right could electromagnetic toxins be the missing link in some of the mainstream information. The reason I'm sharing this is because I personally, like if I was going to self-diagnose myself, 100% electromagnetic hypersensitivity syndrome. Kid you not. This is why I have to do my weekly day off grid, three hours out of cell phone reception in my old school analog Jeep that's not giving me any, you know, EMFs from heated seats, the Bluetooth. Seriously, guys, try and go as analog as you possibly can with your appliances at home, with your vehicles. Might not look mm -hmm. as cool, but you're going to be healthier. And I just see so many people struggling, especially, especially young moms mm -hmm. with stress, pain, and anxiety. And I can't help to think, I can't, I, like, I have to share this because mm -hmm. There are clinical studies, live blood analysis that looks at individuals when they're in a grounded state, their red blood cells are going to be, you know, evenly spaced between one another. They're not going to be clumped together. And then in an ungrounded state, even just five minutes of yammering away on your cell phone or being on your, your personal laptop will start to actually change the ionic interactions in a live blood cell analysis of your red blood cells. What's that going to do? It's going to impair your oxygenation. You're going to have lower energy levels. You're going to have worse perfusion to your skin. So what's your take on my theory that, you know, really, I think that electromagnetic toxins are hugely impacting more people than they might realize. Oh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, we were just talking in um, Beauty and the Biohacker. That was such an awesome episode because we were talking Isn't Katie about so much fun? Professionally she trained journalist, too. Is That's my co-host on that show. The best. Absolutely the best. You guys, you you if you want to be a fly on the wall with a conversation, that's the podcast you need to be listening to, right? Uh, such valuable information being shared. But we were talking about the symptoms of um, EMF. So, you know, the, it, very neurotoxic. 
So I think anything neurotoxic, you're not sleeping, you have insomnia, you think uh, you're forgetful, your, your memory recall is poor, uh, you have anxiety, you have stress, ADHD, you know, onset of these things that are, are stronger than what they used to be. Um, you have digestive issues, you have skin issues, uh, rashes developing on the body, especially when it comes to things that are stinging and burning sensations are more likely to be associated with EMF. So I rattle these kinds of symptoms off, which are very typical of any kind of toxicity, but there are some that, especially neuro, especially skin with the the stinging or tingling, burning sensation are more equivalent to EMF than any other type of toxicity. And we, the reason I has, uh, mentioned the last podcast is because we, I think, normalize these feelings. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a 55, you know, aged woman. Uh, so, However, you went into menopause in your mid-30s from a hysterectomy. 46. Oh my no, gosh. I actually was diagnosed in menopause before the hysterectomy a year wow. before, um, you know, had the test done and was diagnosed in there. And that was part of the reproductive issues that I was having and why they did the full hysterectomy. So um, already in it and still at the age of 55, I'm still dealing, um, you know, if I don't do the daily measures that I need to do, I can feel the symptoms of menopause. And I'm telling you, you can go through menopause totally minimizing those symptoms. And we'll get into more of that. But we, we, we say, oh, I have a stressful job. Oh, I'm getting older. Oh, this is part of being a mom. Oh, my friends are feeling this way too. We tend to normalize not feeling well. We tend to make it as though it's okay. And it's really not. And and it's really hard to get people to understand because you've got to be on that other side of feeling good to really get you know, what feeling good feels like. I really actually started to take some notes from my uh, clients. You know, some of these women I look after are just absolutely thriving, both in the clinic, mm -hmm. in my local community, and also online internationally that I meet with for right. virtual calls and stuff like that. Like people are feeling lonely. I have not felt lonely this year. You know, we became friends. I became friends with Katie, mm -hmm. so many other incredible people we've been able to connect with. Mm -hmm. So you just have to start to number one, look for the beauty around you. And number two, a couple of tips for my clients in their nineties. These are 90 year old oh. women that are freaking crushing life. And I love it. Some of the common threads that I'll see in my 90 year old, like late 80s, early 90 year old clients is they'll say things to me like, oh, all my friends are complaining of like knee issues, hip issues, using their walkers. And they're just like, I'm not giving into that. So it's crazy. Like the power of when we just start to take charge actually of the inner narrative, mm -hmm. it's really key. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about electromagnetic toxins in this episode is because of the profound impacts it has for me. So when I do my day of grounding, going mm -hmm. off grid, three hours out of cell phone reception, I'm not hearing any other humans. I'm not hearing cars. I'm not hearing dogs barking. I'm not being inundated by other people's technologies around as well. Their cell phones emitting um, frequencies. I sleep better. And mm -hmm. I know this because I use the aura ring and I can track my sleep. My energy the next day is off the hook. I can work out harder. I'm more clear. I just feel so much better. So like you said before, people just kind of normalize mm -hmm. feeling like blah. Mm -hmm. and you, it's, it's almost like it's such a shame because sometimes people don't know just how magnificent and radiant <laughs> they could feel and they can look. But you know what? It takes effort. It really does. It's not going to happen just by accident. No, there's not a magic pill to swallow. There's not, you know, this... except the red pill. I go for the red pill. <laughs> the red... <laughs> nope, the green or blue. <laughs> no, it's got to be the red pill. Red pill, the blue red. pill. It's got to be the red pill. The red pill. You know, and, and that's the thing is, is people, I think, sometimes want things to be different, but they're not ready to get into the game yet. Does that make sense? You know, and I love that you shared about these 90 and 80 year old women is, you know, they are active, yep. not just 
physically, but mentally as well, right? One of them wants to start horseback riding. And, you know, we talked about this in Beauty and the Biohacker, and we just recorded this episode. You should definitely check out that uh, that that co-host podcast with Katie Taibbe and I. And cold therapy, it sucks. It is not fun getting in cold water and then shivering after, but how you feel afterwards, being surrounded by water that is flowing in the way that it's meant to flow. We are Amazing. basically bags of water with some DNA and some ions and stuff like that and nucleotides and, and molecules, but we're mainly water. And one of the things that we can start to think about is, you know, how can we reduce our toxic exposure right. to our water? Let's just jump into that for a hot second. So water exposure, you know, number one, I want pay, you know, so many people think about, I got to drink clean water, right? That that seems to be top of mind awareness with the, the drinking of the water. But we also need to be paying attention to what we bathe in. And my uh, experience shows that that's even way more important than what we're drinking. Now, I want you to do both. But I want you to, you know, to be thinking about what you're bathing in. I love your your mason jar. Uh, hello, here's mine with my minerals in it. I am not. <laughs> drinking water and hot liquids out of anything plastic. This is so important, you guys. Even your Keurig or your coffee maker, all those plastic tubes that the hot water is going through, you're exposing yourself to the microplastics. This stuff is impacting genes and, you know, progeny down the line, right? It's it's all everything. You know, I go into the kitchen and I give, you know, because these are the things that we don't think about with those coffee machines. So, you know, everybody wants the Keurig. I want the little pod and I can put it in there, but there's mold and bacteria building up in that, that little stem, you know, that pulls up the water. What, what are you doing to clean that out? There's not much you can do. Even She's our, a French press guys and they hello. look cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so easy. It really, truly is. That's what I use every single day as a French press. I'm all glass. You know, there's nothing plastic touching anything. There's not any surfaces that cannot be cleaned. Uh, you know, so I know that everything is clean coming in. And then pay attention to your coffee. I know where I'm off topic here, but you know, organic coffee, grind your own beans, know what, know where they're coming from and don't use, well, you're not using a, a, a filter anyway, but those bleached out white you know, coffee filters are terrible for your body. But let's get back to EMFs. And also we? tea bags, right? So tea same thing goes for tea bags. Uh, yes. If you are drinking loose leaf tea, you got to make sure it's organic because the first time the water goes over the coffee or the tea leaves, that's the first time it's getting washed. And do you know how much mold is in coffee and tea? I don't want to know. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> That's so, why I'm super particular about the coffee that I drink. Yeah. And you guys probably all know which brand of coffee I drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got EMFs, right? And we know how neurotoxic they are. They really are affecting everything to do with our brain, the way we think, the way we feel, um, the way we remember things. Uh, there, It's being attributed to leukemia. It's being attributed to, uh, there is a... a um, there's a name for a particular type of brain cancer that affects the, it's a tumor within the brain, but also the spinal cord is being attributed to EMF frequencies. So oh, those are acoustic neuromas. Uh, I know that one that's in published data. So I can mm -hmm. only talk about things that have clinical published data and acoustic neuromas is one of them. By the way, when you're talking about electromagnetic stress, clearly I've been going down the rabbit hole. Uh, I've been really looking at Dr. Beverly Rubik's work and she mm -hmm. has a couple of lectures on YouTube. One of them's an hour and a half long. The other is two and a half hours long where she actually shares her her references. She's got her PhD in the human biofield and biophysics. And this mm. is definitely something that we need to really bring into our awareness because we're not really hearing about it right. in like mainstream and things like right. that. Or if you've heard of like, oh, 1G, 2G, right? I mean, to be honest, those are actually class 2B carcinogens. But the reason why um, she actually drops a, a huge knowledge bomb in one of her lectures uh, there was actually a state that was putting a black box label on certain cell phones, but then the telecommunication tele, telecommunications company actually was able to sue the state and have that block 
black box label removed. So this is so much bigger just because you can get McDonald's, just because you can get cigarettes, just because you can buy cell phones doesn't mean it's good for you. Same with, you know, the route with the router. So uh, some of the quickest things that you can do to kind of clean up your act uh, electromagnetically mm -hmm. is put your router on a Christmas light timer. Nice. So it's off while you're sleeping. I got my parents mm -hmm. to do that right nice. away touch the earth for 40 minutes a day. And I'm in Canada. I got no excuses. There's snow on the ground. Put a blanket <laughs> over your feet, right? Yeah. But you need that proton exchange. You need to get rid of the, the buildup of protons in the body. Right. Because when we have an overaccumulation of ions in our body, stuff isn't going to function as well, right? So everything that gets made in the body, peptides, hormones, you know, genetic material, mm -hmm. it all is mediated through ions. Right. Ion gated voltage channels, it's what makes your heart pump, right? Mm -hmm. Signals in your brain is mediated through ion messaging, right? Mm -hmm. Through, you know, the nerve synapses, it's it's all ionic. Mm -hmm. And we're not really like, why are we hearing about this stuff? Well, we kind of know why it's, you know, big companies. It doesn't fit the protocol. So frustrating. But the WHO has stated that EMFs are a possible known carcinogen. They have stated that. In 2005, you heard me reference this in the last interview. 2005, they said about, you know, handful of people per million are electromagnetically hypersensitive. And in other support wellness groups, it was upwards of 10%. So that was when we had like 1G, 2G. Now we're at 5G. But I don't understand why they haven't updated that. Well, because there's too many people that want the 5G, there's too many people, you know, that it, it's, I don't know, like, why it. haven't the statistics been updated? Like, oh, I don't understand why there's not no more studies on it. I, I really do think that I, well, there I've are seen, studies, they're just not published on those types of organization sites. Check PubMed, PubMed.org. Do you do, do any checking on, on that uh, site? Mm -hmm. In my research, actually, a lot of this stuff is heavily researched in Europe. So say, for example, okay. when you go to those European med spas where you get to, you know, hang out for a week and they do all this stuff, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're getting your cleansing in, they're doing different facial rejuvenation stuff, body rejuvenation stuff. And then they also have these technologies in the facility that are um, helping to adjust the electromagnetic frequencies around you. So it's kind of like modulating mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. uh, the biofield mm -hmm. around you. It's a study called biophysics. So mm -hmm. we, we have definitely more of an emphasis on awareness of electromagnetic toxins in Europe. It's right. just not so much in North America. And it's actually uh, heavily politicized. It's really too bad. It, and it really is. But but that that's par for the course. You know, North America, European nations, for instance, in personal care products, they've banned, I don't remember what the actual number is currently right now, but let's just say like over 1,300 ingredients to be used within personal care products has been banned in European nations. In the United States, it's it's less than 15. Why do you think I love UK 15. brands? I love UK brands for skincare. I like Canadian brands for skincare. US is definitely on, on the lower list. Very so I'm and so food. particular. Food yep. is the same too. Even your big craft, Heinz, um, there was another company. I know not things that I would eat, but they're labeled not only are they labeled, but the ingredients are different in the United States than they are over in European nations. Also, quick tip. I love Guinness beer. Like, I feel really good after having Guinness. But say, for example, I have like a North American type alcohol, especially beer, like the barley. They're mm -hmm. we're using the pesticides in North America, right. but they're not in Europe, in not UK. In, right. So yeah. it really just depends how sensitive you are. You'll become more sensitive the healthier and more dialed in you are with your body, mind, spirit energy. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. You it feel is. better, but you also know when stuff makes you feel like garbage. It's funny because I just was um I, I was just was talking to a, a doctor in Canada, and he said that um and I don't know the science behind this, but if you're really, really sensitive to fragrances, scents, that, that there's a problem with your liver detoxing. So it's not necessarily that you necessarily have that sensitivity and you want to look at uh, doing a better protocol with your liver. And I'm very sensitive to smells, very. 
So Me too. I'm going to be yeah. checking in on that. One. I can't even go into big box stores. It's like, number one, the lights are just <laughs> brutal. Those LED lights totally wreck your <laughs> sleep, circadian rhythm, but just the off-gassing the VOCs. So I did a recent interview with uh, David Milburn from Hypo Air, and yeah. that's one of the air purifiers I use in my home here. They're really actually pretty affordable. They're like 150 bucks. Plug them into your wall. They use about the same energy output as just a light bulb, and you just rinse out the filters. Let me tell you, can I tell you my story about air quality? Obviously. Why do you think I have you on here, Toxin Terminator, Amy so, Carlson? So the house that we bought um, in November in Arizona, we found out um, during the purchase price that it had a water issue. And so I had a mold remediation company come in and do testing because I wanted to see see, do we have issues within the house and do we need to have, you know, things done? Because obviously that's not something I want in, in a home that I'm living in. So they came in and they did their testing and they do an outside air quality. Then they do kind of a, a base test quality and then they test different you know rooms inside the house. Now, typically, even in my um, certifications and, and research, I found that normally inside air quality is about 10 times more polluted than outdoor air quality. And that's because we're closed in, um, you know, we're high efficiency and we have so many different things within the house that we're, you know, producing toxins, even when we're living in a clean environment or what we think is clean. So I was very anxious to see what those test results would be. And here's the thing. Now, I diffuse essential oils in my house every single day in the bedroom, in the living room, in the kitchen, in my office are always diffusing. Now, when we did the test, he's like, you have to turn your diffusers off. We can't have them, you know, messing with the test. I'm like, no problem. But when they tested the um, outside air quality was 27 parts. It's either parts per million or parts per billion. I don't remember specifically what it was, but 27 was the number inside my house in the kitchen where the water um, leak was, was four parts per million. So my air inside quality, even without the diffusers running at the time, was, what is that, better than seven times um, better inside than it was outside. So um, you can- By buy the way, cooking with certain oils is going to really wreck your indoor air quality. Oh, Yes, you know, there's the oils go rancid in the heat and then there's just oils that are just not good for the body anyway. So, you know, with air quality, there are many great air purifiers, but there have been tests done. I had another friend who actually had a machine that tested her air quality. Mm -hmm. And so she turned it, you know, had it on. It was like 436 my, you know, whatever the parts were. And then she ran her diffuser for an hour and it was down under 30, you know. It's so probably because the uh, water molecules that were being diffused up were actually binding to the particulates and then bringing them down and making them fall. That would be kind of like my postulation. I do want to just mention that keep your eyes on the skies, guys, because what they do in things like SpaceX, NASA, what they're doing up with the astronauts on the uh, industrial level for optimizing those people's lives, that's now making its way into the mainstream. So we got companies like Viome, we got companies like Hypoware, mm -hmm. they literally buy this research from like the Department of Defense, I kid you not, and NASA. And we now have the ability if we choose to, to really kind of you know, optimize our health because we do need to mitigate a lot of the toxins that we oh, are exposed to. Absolutely. So, you know, you have to look into, you know, purifying the air, purifying the water, purifying your food, purifying, you know, what goes on the body and mm -hmm. purifying your mental. You know, we just need to tackle all five of those areas and you're going to be so far ahead uh, of the ball game when you do those things and really start to feel what it feels like to feel good. Yeah. And where we're talking about, you know, getting ahead, it's not so much that I'd like you to reframe that if you guys are listening to this. If you do have your body, mind, spirit, energy practices dialed in, what I'm observing is that there are certain individuals who are cruising through these days with definitely a little bit more grace and ease. And that's the benefit to taking the time to learn about this stuff is that you will be able to overcome life stressors, you'll be a more resilient individual, but it takes work. Well, and when and you talk, 
it, Go ahead. It, it's a harmony. It's, you know, yeah. everything that we do for our body is bringing it back into balance. Our body wants to homeostasis. be homeostasis, you know, homeostasis. So it's, it's bringing everything back into balance. It's not ahead. It's not behind. Mm -hmm. You're right. And thank you for catching me on that. But I like to use the word harmony as well. You know, when we think about balance, our mind definitely is going to go to this equilibrium, right? You know, you think of a scale. And so, but if we think of harmony, you know, we're not going to those extremes. And I really like that word instead. Yeah, resonance, coherence, those are other options as well. So tip for you to get a double whammy. I want you guys to keep your phone on airplane mode as much as possible. Yes. Do not have the news running in your house. You do not want subconscious things or unconscious no. things dictating how you live and feel. So the the uh, kind of like benefit to really limiting your exposure on electric devices, electromagnetic right. digital devices, they're always sending out signals. They're not analog like my old school 1994 Jeep. It responds to me when I turn it on. Your cell phone, your laptop is always looking for a response from you. Different from say an FM radio when you tune into the frequency. So when you start to reduce your electromagnetic exposure on your cell phone, on your computer, and also reduce your exposure to other people's reality right now, you're going to be staying in your own lane a little bit more. We just had a question come through talking about uh, EMF protection, and I've done I've done a little bit of research in this. So Taylor is asking, yeah, she liked our, our non-bleach too big comment. She's asking about things like shungite for protection. Mm -hmm. Also, what are good products for EMF protection? There's a lot on the market, but don't know which is best and effective. Taylor, I'm so happy you asked this. Just putting this out there, I actually wear shungite almost every day. And uh, I do also use something else called an arc crystal. So there's a lot of really cool uh, wearable technology like the aura ring that can mm -hmm. help. But there's also a lot of CRAP out there, like those little stickers you put on your cell phone that's going to protect you from EMF. Like people are making a small fortune right now. So when I talk about things, I want you to focus on those things that I share and there's a reason why I won't be talking about other things, not necessarily because I don't know about them, but a lot of times I just won't talk about things because it's not worth my effort to even acknowledge. Very good. So what, uh, what have you done in your home to say limit your EMF exposure for you and your family? Absolutely. So distance between yourself and the Wi-Fi router is key. Um, make it, you know, we all have Wi-Fi routers in our home. So let's make sure that we have it in a place that's not the main congregation spot for the home. So not in the family room, you know, get it into a, a hallway, you know, an area of the home that you're not congregating in. Uh, secondly, like you said, put it on the timer, have it turning off at night. So that's not dispersing out through uh, the nighttime when you're trying to sleep. Secondly, get all your electronics out of your bedroom. Um, you know, get your, use a battery operated cell phone or a alarm clock, choose the words, Amy, <laughs> alarm clock and get your, you know, get your cell phone out of there, get your computer out of there, get your TV out of there. Number one, we don't want the EMS. We don't want the lights. We don't want the effect on the circadian rhythm, but also your brain cannot shut down and get itself into its restorative state for sleep. If you're on the TV, you're on your phone, you're on the computer, that is a stimulus to the brain. And we need to take about an hour before we go to bed to really just calm ourselves down and have a nighttime routine. Get yourself into a nighttime routine. Yeah, that's really important. So one of my evening routines is taking my Epsom salt soak. I'll put some of my favorite body oil mm -hmm. in there as well. I'll have my red light therapy going. I cannot take my cell phone into the bath with me because nope. as soon as I do that, what I end up doing is scrolling. And then, you know, there you go. I've been in the bath for an hour, hour and a half. And my <laughs> hubby's like, Rachel, I thought we were going to watch a movie. This is like real life Varga struggles right now. So no cell phone in the bath. That is your time to be mm -hmm. within and like, check yourself guys, mm -hmm. catch yourself. Like, why do we need to be scrolling on social media all the time? Like what is actually the benefit to it? 
Right. Well, yeah. What are you getting out of it? What is it providing for you? Um, I mean, this is an EMF related, but on my cell phone, for instance, I have zero notifications turned on. None. So I'm very intentional about when I go in and check my email, when I check my text messages, when I go on to social media, I have dedicated time for that because I don't want to become, oh my gosh, it's an hour later and what have I done? You know, I've been lost in scroll land. <laughs> time is like the one thing we can't get back. So a really easy thing, you guys probably heard me say this in previous episodes, it's it's not the screen time that's wrecking us. It's it's not that. It's really actually the electromagnetics mm -hmm. that our devices are kicking it off is, is it actually is. more impactful to our you know biofield and the biophysics and our biophysiology. These are these are words that you need to start to kind of have in your awareness. But what mm -hmm. you can do on your smartphone is just actually limit your screen time. So I have it automatically to 45 minutes a day on all of my social networking apps. I will not be on that for more than 45 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. That's why email is the best way to reach me, info right. at rachelbarka.ca, <laughs> because I will dedicate more time to checking that. It's just, yeah. it's just a better way to connect sometimes. Right. And you're talking about a lot of your viewers are really struggling with stress and anxiety. And again, we're talking EMFs are a neurotoxin. So if you're struggling with stress and anxiety, you have to start taking a look at what are you cooking in a microwave? You know, stop. There's better ways. Use a toaster oven, use your oven, use the stovetop in order to warm up your food. Stop using, use a tea kettle to warm up your water. Uh, you, the microwaves are actually cheap. Make sure it's not a plastic tea kettle. Oh, gosh. No, you shouldn't have any plastic in your home. Just get rid of it. Anyway. And no like plastic toys for kids, guys. So a lot of my clients, they're you know, menopausal <laughs> women. They got grandkids. They're buying toys for their kids. And you know where they're getting them? They're getting them from Walmart and they're plastic toys. And so it's like, pay attention to where you're buying your toys. Are they made in the Orient? Mm -hmm. Did you hear about the issue with fuse beads a couple of years ago and like the oh heavy my. metal toxins and yes. plastics? Yes. Tons of information on you just, you just have to open your eyes, yeah. become an educated consumer. So unplug your appliances at night. Do not leave your hair dryer plugged in. Do not leave your curling iron plugged in. Unplug. That's a good tip because clearly, you know, I got to <laughs> tame this mane. This is natural here. Um, I just I just turned my curling iron off and my hair dryer off. Unplug but it. They're still it's plugged in. still emitting an energy and an energy field, even though it's it's turned off. It's plugged in. It's emitting electricity. So unplug. Plus, it's a fire hazard. It's an absolute fire hazard. So if you're, you know, unplug the appliances that you can, um, you know, every single night, just, you know, or even when you, you, you don't use it. I unplug everything in the morning. That's such a good point, too, because we all have printers. Right. And the printers now are smart. They're again, they're digital. They're always sending out signals. They're Bluetooth. They're convenient. But I love mm -hmm. the idea of fully unplugging those as well. I'm going to start to do that. So thanks for the tip. Absolutely. So that will help you out. Minimize the exposures to the appliances. Get the Wi-Fi out. Turn on your um, airplane mode so it's not searching for a signal. Um, how many? That's actually you better than turning your phone off, by the way, the airplane mode. Uh, based on some of Dr. Beverly Rubick's work in one of her presentations and seminars, uh, she presents at different conferences and mm -hmm. shares her research and the clinical data that when she's actually tested the biofield, uh, there's less interference on the biofield right. with a phone on airplane mode, which is crazy versus mm -hmm. off. Right. And um, turn your Bluetooth off. Because if you have Bluetooth on any of your devices, it's going to be automatically looking for stuff to pair and connect with. So turn the Bluetooth off. I have I don't even have Bluetooth turned on any of my devices. Yeah, I actually made made sure you turned it off on your laptop so it didn't interfere with our streaming experience. <laughs> and it was not on uh, to begin Fabulous. with. Fabulous. You know, That's great. I, yeah. So, you know, there's all these things that, and listen, we want to be able to live with technology. We want to be able to, you know, take advantage of some of the good things about technology, but let's just minimize. And that's the thing. I don't want people to feel overwhelmed because when we start talking toxins, 
you know, that's why my, my podcast is called The Toxin Terminator. I And my cover art is what it is because I wanted to take- You're like very, the Ghostbusters of toxins. It's adorable. <laughs> I wanted to, well, and I wanted to take a very serious topic and understand that, you know, you don't want to be overwhelmed. We have to have fun within this. And, and we just have to learn how to be kind. You know, we have to learn how to minimize- the exposures. We're not going to be perfect with it. So each, you know, we're always learning. I am learning something new every single day, always learning something new. And so there's always a different exposure. I found out that even cabinets um, inside of our homes, inside of our RVs are emitting VOCs. But I found out about a, a great stain and paint that you can use to paint them and stain them to, to seal that in. Who well, knows? that's, yeah, I mean, it's so important. So air purifiers are really key. Again, you can just get them in every room, but yeah. stay tuned for some of the technology that I'm going to drop to actually help you uh, measure your biofield. So we've kind of heard things like, oh, you know, the aura, we can use Kirlon photography, which actually is like a highly charged electromagnetic mm -hmm. plate. Clearly going down the rabbit hole on this stuff. So highly charged electromagnetic plate, put a leaf on it. It actually has what's called a proton mm -hmm. or sorry, photon. Photon is a packet of light. A proton is a positively charged ion. We get that overdevelopment of protons when mm -hmm. we're not grounded. So that's why we need to touch the earth to let those excess protons leave. So photons are packets of light. Mm -hmm. All we see is light, by the way, palms, faces, the highest emitters of photons in the body. So wow. super cool, right? Like yeah. radiance. Hello. This is why I'm so into this stuff because we want to look more beautiful. We want to, you know, we want to feel better. We want to look better. And I yeah. think that this is like the next layer in my work of unpacking what radiance is, is this is the next like deep dive rabbit hole. You guys are taking the red pill with me. I think I'm pretty sure it's the red pill. It's the red so pill. yeah. Here's another one too. Those Fitbits, take them off, please. Yes. Those yes. are, first of all, energy enters our body through the left side, discharges through the right side. And most people wear their Fitbit on their left hand. You know, mm. if you're right handed, right, you're going to wear it. You are affecting your body's frequency, your body's you, energy. Do you know the, the, our colleague, the fed up pharmacist? The fed up pharmacist? Yeah, you know her. Anyways, the fulfilled that's. Part. I haven't met the fed up pharmacist. I know anyways. the fulfilled pharmacist. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyways, I'll, I'll get you guys connected. She just sent me a DM on Instagram and she's like, Rachel, I totally hear you. I took my, um, you know, my smart Apple watch off because the EMFs it kicks off. She already started to feel better. Yes. Legitimately, this stuff is measurable. When we are more grounded, we sleep better. How mm -hmm. do I know that? How can I make that claim? Because I use my aura ring to test my sleep and it's noticeable how the improvement in my sleep is. So anyways, what I was talking about with, with this, this leaf on this highly yes. charged the electric Russian. plate is called Kirlon photography. The Russians have done a ton of research on this. Every living biological thing emits light. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And so then there's other pieces of technology, like for example, the bio well uh, you can actually put your finger in this little square detector. And what it does is it measures the photon light packet emission. It's called a corona discharge. And there's different vectors that come from each <laughs> fingertip. And then there's a computer program that extrapolates it and gives you a readout of your biofield. This is like next level biofield hacking. I'm going to, you know, so run is it that gonna tell you where you're out of balance and what needs to yeah. bring it back in. Cause I used to do this device that you actually held in the palm of your hand and it, it read, it sent impulses through the body, you know, much like the tech, the technology of, of a Fitbit. And it would, it would, it showed these like vectors of the body and all these little balls and where you were out of balance and what you would need to do. to. I don't know how it. accurate that would be, to be honest, okay. um, because the detectors do have to be pretty darn sophisticated to actually be accurate. There's probably a lot of like bogus tech out there. So the tech that I'm bringing to your awareness is, you know, it kind of makes sense to me. It's been I studied for a long time. Um, the also was really cool is the live blood analysis thing. Like we talked yes. about earlier with yes. the red blood cells, that's actually been um, 
also substantiated with the biofield readout right. as well. Right. So it's it's all about, you know, having to really like test this stuff. But what's cool is that um, this stuff is actually in alignment with TCM. So say you don't have the funds to, you know, get these pieces of technology to start biohacking, get yourself some acupuncture treatments, mm -hmm. get, do some Qigong, mm -hmm. do some yoga. That's mm -hmm. actually one of the easiest ways to just start to ground yourself as well, because that those practices will actually help to uh, thicken up your biofield, if you will. Ah, I love that. What a, what a great, I, I just, I learned so much from you, you know, not, not, <laughs> to be able to come on here. This is amazing. Totally down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Taylor, <laughs> Taylor just says I'm all for rabbit hole. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you only knew what I consume on evenings and weekends, it ain't, it ain't Netflix. That's for sure. It's funny. There is this, uh, there, there's all these shows that pop up on Netflix and it's, it's kind of like, okay, sure. I'm going to like indulge my, my Hollywood guilty pleasure. Oh, but wow. I just like, Oh, I listen to some of these people talk and how they talk and what they're talking about. I was like, I don't have time can't. for that garbage. I can't go there. <laughs> and that's another thing too. You, you know, you, you said turn the news off. I haven't watched the news in uh, several years. I just don't do it. And it doesn't mean I have my, my head in the sand. It, I'm just very selective on what I listen to and what I allow in. Because listen, everybody has their perception of what reality is. And the news is very sensationalized, very drama driven, and it's intended to keep you in this heightened, anxious state of mind. It really is. And, and so just turn it off. And sick. And, like, does, do you think that what you're seeing on the mainstream is actually to help you be healthier and live better. Okay, so Dr. Deb Matthews, you know Dr. Deb Matthews. She's mm -hmm. you know a part of our group here, mm -hmm. and uh, you know she's one of those docs that you'll see on the news talking about mm -hmm. this side the other thing. So you know, tons of our colleagues were doing news segments all the time talking about you know how we can be better in this regard and that mm -hmm. regard when stuff started to you know ish hitting the fan. And she said to me off camera, she's like, Rachel, I can't even take those gigs anymore because whatever you say like a week later, it's going to be wrong. And yeah, we have to be very careful where we get our information from. Um, this is this is quite, quite serious. And we have more control over our well-being and our beauty and our radiance and how good we can feel than we probably realize. And I really want that to sink in for you guys. It is not. Listen. If I can say anything to women today, it isn't, you don't need to fear virus, cancer, you know, all these things outside of yourself, you know, because you have so much within you that you can change the way you feel. You can change. I suffered from three chronic diseases that I have zero symptoms from today. You know, I know people, you can change just because your mom had heart disease or high cholesterol or, and your grandmother does not mean that you have to suffer and, and be in that same criteria. There are things that you can do. You have a choice. And ladies, let's empower each other. Let's get empowered because I don't want to live in a world where I don't have a choice. I don't want to live in a world where I feel like life is happening to me. You know, that's not the case. You know, we create the life we want. Absolutely. And a word to go along as an extension of empowerment is actually epigenetics. So it's oh. not so much like our, our genes, our blueprint that we necessarily care about. Mm -hmm. What we care about is actually how those genes are expressing. And that comes straight from the words of, you know, Naveen Jain, the mm -hmm. creator of Viome. He's, you know, one of the world's big, top billionaires. He's on a mission to do the first commercial 
manned trip to the moon. Uh, he also has <laughs> mining rights for water on the moon. Like this guy knows what's what's going on. Right. Well, and, and they'll all tell you that you know the genes are there. The genes are there. It's it, you have to have something trigger the gene. You got to have it turned on or turned off. That's epigenetics. So, you know, think of it as a switch of turning things on and off. And and you, you know what you do, how you choose to have your lifestyle is really going to dictate, um, you know, whether those genes get turned on or off. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think there is lots of really cool nuggets of wisdom in here. But uh, the bottom line is when you clean up your act at home with your toxins, whether it's VOCs in the air, what you're putting on your skin, what mm -hmm. you're exposing yourself to that's unseen, which is the electromagnetic stuff, and right. also the unconscious and subconscious stuff through messaging on various different platforms. When you just clear that ish out of the way, you give your body the best chance it can possibly have to achieve homeostasis. What are you going to feel when your body is in homeostasis and balance? Mm. You're going to feel better. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel you're, good. Vibrant. You know, the word vibrant, um, you know, shine, inspire. You're, you're going to be able to now, if you feel good and you're vibrant and your light is shining, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to smile at people. You're going to want to interact with people. You're going to have the energy to work on those relationships, to build those relationships, to make a difference in your community that's going to go out to the bigger community. It just has this whole ripple effect. Yep. When we care for ourselves, we care for others. Um, it's that concept of we really are all one. Yes. So, Amy, I am uh, just absolutely enamored by you. I love our conversations. You know, we just, this was kind of just like a session. We just sort of let it flow and, and let it roll and stuff like that. But uh, how can people work with you? How can you help others clean up their act at home? So two ways, if you want to um, just follow the podcast, go to amycarlson.com and it's A-I-M-E-E-C-A-R-L-S-O-N.com. Uh, you'll be able to follow the podcast there, take my free toxic risk assessment. Um, if you really want to see what kind of exposures you're having inside your home. And then we also have brand new at transformingwomenshealth.com. We have a three-day boot camp. Our launch is February 21st. Um, we launch off that three day boot camp. We also have a roadmap to wellness club. That's a monthly membership group where women, we hear so many of you <clears throat> that you want to be supported. You do not have the support from your family and friends. You need that community. You need that accountability. And that's what the roadmap to wellness club is all about. So you can get both of those at transformingwomenshealth.com. Yeah, you're doing some seriously meaningful work because a lot of people are really struggling right now. They're looking for community. You know, mm -hmm. the menopause brain is yeah. certainly something. It's crazy what, you know, when hormones start to run the show and uh, things aren't in homeostasis, it really yeah. affects our minds. So thank you so much for creating those you know, those resources for all of us to enjoy and support one another with, lift each other up. And for all of you guys tuning in, be sure to hang out with uh, with Amy Carlson at amycarlson.com. Her website will also be in the show notes here. Please share this episode with friends or family that you think could benefit from this because it's really, really important, especially now more than ever, if you want to do well, if you want to be able to overcome obstacles in different difficult times in your life, you got to have your practices dialed in. It's not going to happen by accident. I'm not going to pull a Jane Fonda in my 80s without the facelifts by accident, but that's my goal. Let's just help each other look more radiant, feel better, have more beautiful interactions, start to notice the beauty around you all today. Get your grounding practices in, touch your feet on the ground, be that weird person that's hugging the trees and getting in the water and <laughs> yeah. all that cool stuff. We can hang out. We can be friends. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. I love you so much, Amy, for the work that you're doing as the Toxin Terminator. And can't wait to have you back on the show in the next episode right here on the Rachel Varga podcast. Thank you.